Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you had a good day in the market. It's February 11th. Wow. Big, big range today on the market on SPY as well as GameStop. We're going to talk about that, talk about the options. Sub up, like up, comment down, happy money sticks around. Ring the bell so you don't frown. We have a Twitter at happy money YT. You can follow us on there. I do Twitter spaces at times. I think that's what it's called. There's our Discord. Link for that's in the description. Um, so it looks like we're ripping now, but this was a pretty, pretty violent day overall. Here's the spy. Spy is making this uh, monster face formation. Very, very scary. Uh, today there was Russia fears. Um, that's what the media says, at least right about here and warning Americans to get out of Russia. And didn't really give any info as far as I know. There, there might be more to it. Um, this might be a bigger macroeconomic uh, incident going on, though. Been a big divergence from the bonds, and the market is uh, market needs to come down or bonds need to go up. And uh, that's that's what I'm hearing. I, I'm not a I'm not into that as much. However, uh, I don't always believe the first thing I hear, and especially when it comes from the media. So. Sometimes they, they use excuses like war or this or that uh, when there's nothing going on necessarily just to move money around or to crash the market because it needs to or whatever. Um, that said, yeah, we'll see what develops over the weekend. I mean, the Russia thing might be escalating also, and then that could also have a, have a load on the spy. I mean, we know that the market is way overvalued and still is um, the things that are holding it up at least. Some stuff isn't. A lot of stuff's correct, corrected since last year, and then more specifically since November. <clears throat> a lot of things have come down. Fifty percent, sixty percent. Jimmy was part of that, um, part of that sell-off uh, since November. But today, uh, we're talking about trough and how we might come back down. And I haven't, I haven't thought that until it was, I guess two days ago once we broke the resistances here and we didn't just rip because historically that's what we would have done if this was the resistance actually that one moved whoops if those two were resistances delete that there and we didn't so i'm like hmm then i was thinking wait maybe this is another just just this this wasn't the peak but the peak's here and, you know like we were here and now today in the last three days is more like right here and this is the peak that we're making um right because if you zoom out i mean maybe this is the peak here and we come down and retest just a little bit and then rip we'll see uh not that it matters a whole lot i guess definitely doesn't matter if you have shares you're just buying shares um shorter term ta on the four hour it looks pretty nice it looks like a nice kind of just rip up consolidation kind of and it's also consolidating above our prior resistance and it looks very bullish to me on the four hour one hour not quite as much um if it holds up above i guess that resistance that's a good thing it just kind of consolidating the rsi dropping down like this even though it's not a higher it's not a divergence just the weakening rsi with similar price action is can sometimes be a, a sign that it's downtrending and of course that that's also shown by the bearish macd but i mean today was kind of a very special event with uh the overall market just tanking down 1.7 percent i mean this this was aggressive sell-off and you saw it here in gme we haven't seen that for a while but gme today was on it was on four or five percent and it would have had a big day and if it did i was thinking we might this might not be a trough we might just be the price action this on this uh on this rally basically the cycle is different and it's maybe it's maybe not going to behave quite like this and there's probably a few reasons for that one of you guys commented that the the market's in a different place now than it was during these cycles and that's true um that could have an effect because we haven't been in kind of this this type of range since we've had one last time was i guess 11 3 so we were kind of just yeah it was still pretty normal back in november for the spy a lot of stuff had already come down but um at the other periods when we would pinch or sneeze it was the market was still in this 
uptrend pretty pretty safe pretty stable that could be one one factor um i think also the fact that uh we came down so much more so we're just we've already broken the pattern by just making new lows you know these times we, each time we made higher lows so that's one thing that broke the pattern so i guess it's it would make sense if the way up would be different too potentially also during all these pinches uh one of the data sets and there might be more but the one that i've noticed is different is that our utilization is 100 percent uh right now it has been for two days we haven't had that since january so in january i think utilization was 100 percent for like weeks maybe like eight weeks before they had their pinch and not to say we have to wait eight weeks but um i'm wondering if our our rally this this time around might be more just kind of natural looking because there's no shares they're all it's the utilization's at 100 percent, and so maybe it'll look more like january where it just kind of make, makes bull flags rips consolidates rips consolidates makes higher lows higher highs you know this this is a much more normal looking bullish trend you know in a channel ascending um so yeah that's maybe what we're going to see and that also goes along with what we've kind of looked at as a potential clone chart brchp brain chip uh that that did the same kind of dip and then just rallied back up to that support so um yeah i'm not sure it, it really we have to give it a few days a few trading days i would say and see what the market does see if it pulls jimmy down or up but it's possible we kind of just keep grinding up making you know making higher highs and maybe get to this 150 area and kind of consolidate for a bit and then a final little leg into earnings similar to how we've done actually each time we've actually had it in kind of two waves so here would be the first wave it wasn't really supposed to go that high that was after hours because of bbby but um, first wave consolidates and second wave and they've all kind of done it this one i guess didn't for multiple reasons i don't think that one did but this one i'd say it really started here went up here kind of consolidated these are big range days but this is really just big consolidation uh for like three or four days and you could even say up until like here and then it had kind of a second a second wave which was uh only two days um same with here kind of ripped consolidated chilled so the first wave flat and then the second wave was three days so i mean the move is is quick it's very quick and short and um <laughs> yeah so uh what we're seeing though is different than what we've seen almost all year and that is more natural price action and sometimes we'll see it during sld periods sometimes maybe we've maybe we haven't seen it like this just because we haven't been had 100 percent utilization and so maybe we're starting to see that uh so i'm um, still bullish for price action up until the end of march which is here or actually this is earnings end of march is uh here but we'll see so every every time we've sold off right after earnings or before earnings this was like two or three weeks before like two weeks before this one was like a week before really didn't start selling off till just after earnings but um stayed flat up until it so it might be something like this where we rip to a certain price and kind of consolidate um unless there's news of course news at earnings around earnings forward positive guidance nft marketplace any kind of thing like that could be a big catalyst for a squeeze um here earnings so this was the day after they shorted down and then here we it was like a week prior was the peak and then they shorted down then i think this was ftd day or something it just ripped out of that <laughs> that hole that that was a crazy day because that kind of defied a lot of shorter term momentum just to have this huge day and then a massive green candle past it um so that said with my options i'm trying to think i've just been kind of all over the place i've kind of slowly scaled into longer positions as long as i i feel like i have kind of end of march i'm safe they might lose value uh initially but um I'm scaling into them because they might not, even if we kind of consolidate here for a day or two, uh, the, the premiums haven't really come down even. Uh, and if even if we come down here and they're down some, I could average into them. But uh, the shorter term ones are a little more dangerous. And I started to open up some shorter term today because today we were rallying. And I'm like, all right, it seems like to, I thought even today actually could have been a huge day. Could have been a 20 or 30 percent day, you know, bring us up high. Um just because we've broken out of this range, but it kind of seems like now we're either, well, I'll, I'm gonna show you the, the percentages too. So 
these uh this bottom to top in the trough so here's the the trough the trough of the trough and the peak of the trough and the trough of the trough <laughs> the bottom of the trough and the top of the trough here's the bottom and the top bottom um i didn't actually measure this one but here's the bottom our price action might be more like this actually just more kind of bullish trends um but anyway, so the bottom to the top on these was like 15% on this one and then 17% range. And here we're at like 50%. So that's one thing that I'm thinking like, eh, it's probably, it's probably not. So yeah, 52%, I drew it out here on TradingView. Probably not the same. We're meaning we probably won't retest down here. Um, cause just because there's a much bigger move, it's, it's broken past, broken out of a range. These, these were just a little quick measure here. So that was 15% from the bottom of the trough up to the peak of the trough. So looking at that, um, it's either this this trough is expanded out where it's just making it just doing the same pattern, but in a bigger range because we're so much lower. So it's going to come way up here and then way down here and then rip or we're not doing this retest pattern and we're gonna just grind up, just keep breaking resistances and keep going. Similar to, again, back to brain chip. But look, this came up here, this hit kind of a support and then it broke out of resistances back here, which for G, I, could, I guess I could overlay this, but which for GME would be 160, starts breaking that and then, and then breaks prior supports back there, which would be like 1,200 these and then it just kind of goes crazy and just breaks all-time highs um so it might be a pattern similar to this just kind of more natural grinding up kind of uh bullish days bull flags consolidation and that kind of looks similar to back here if you think about it these are kind of a bigger range but same type of deal so yeah all that to be said uh i've got a little protection on the downside a couple little puts and um, not doing any covered calls or anything like that until at least mid-February to see where we're at and to see where the price is at. Uh, it's like it's one to, it's rebounding with the market. The, the market today might have just been a scare uh, that, that might not pull out through till next week, but we'll see. Well, depends on what happens over the weekend, I guess. Um, options took a big swing today, but yeah, I scaled into quite a bit of stuff. Um, let's see here. A lot of stuff's red. Okay, so I got 175, 200 call debit spreads. This is a shorter term one. This is for a little bit shorter. This is for March 11th. So that, let's see, 175, 200. Yeah, I wanted to get kind of some different dates. So that's this one. So I spent 1600 on these and max gains 25K and that's if we're at 200 uh, or over 200 by that date, which is, uh, March 11th. So not a huge spread on that. A little bit more risky because what's the, the break even on it's 176. It's gotta be at least 176 by expiration to not lose money on that one. Um, and then I have, just show them in here actually. What did I open up though? Five, 220, 145. So this is a safer one. It costs more money, but my break even's much lower. So that's this one at 42 days. Again, end of March expiration spent 4300 on this one 33 grand upside that's if gme is above 220 by expiration uh if it's at 350 or whatever i'm, I'm capping my gains with this one uh, all these spreads i'm capping gains on uh, i still have these 160 calls those are unlimited upside so if everything works out well i'll be able to exercise all seven of these uh really well i suppose um so yeah, just trying to get different dates and some different numbers in case it doesn't go all the way to 350, if we only go to 200 or 250, and it's just a pinch, we don't squeeze this time around. I also wanted some put credit spreads uh, just to capture some of this shorter term, which I opened before we tanked, unfortunately, but uh, these are Feb 18, so these are next Friday, 124, 118. Um, we'll see, I might have to roll these, but I have enough capital now. I'll show you, I've got, so I've got 17 grand still in buying power because I, I closed those two short puts those 141 short puts. So that released a lot of capital to buy. Um, so I want to do some put credit spreads for the shorter time frame. We'll see if, if it doesn't, if this doesn't work out, then uh, I'll just roll it to next week. I think, I think we are at, at a bottom or at least 
uh, 95 or so will be a bottom and will be going up. We're going to have that pre-earnings run up. I'm, I'm pretty confident in that. So this one I need uh, 123 by next Friday. 124 for that to be um, expire worthless. And then that will be good. 95 one. Is this the one? Maybe it's this one. Oh no. So this is my bearish play. 95, 120 put debit spread for the downside. And then also this 120 put. So yeah. And then SoFi, close that bullish play on SoFi. It, when the market was coming down, I was just trying to get rid of some long exposure. I think Sophie's still looking good, but uh, that was a shorter term one. I still have a longer term on here. So I've got these short puts on, on SoFi and then this call debit spread for 35 days. Um, chart looks good and they're they're hosting the Super Bowl. So those are my cows for that. Tesla play came up today, of course, 35%, 32%. This is my bearish play. I also have Rivian as a bearish play. Um, not a whole lot, not a whole lot of uh, plays on either side, really. It's mostly just Jimmy right now. I opened up Astro puts yesterday when it tanked and it, it kept coming down, of course, today with the market. Um, so I guess it's settling down a little bit. Yeah, Sp Spy hasn't, I thought it was gonna bounce. It hasn't done a whole lot though. This is power hour, we've got 40 minutes left. We'll see. I mean, it's it's oversold, so I expect probably a bounce after hours by Monday uh, before it either comes down more or kind of keeps coming up. 2% on the SPY, that was big. Jimmy, Jimmy was holding up pretty good today. I mean, it, it did most of this move, and Jimmy was just, it was basically flat on the day. Now, look, Jimmy's actually up a little bit. So it really takes this kind of big move on the market to bring Jimmy down because the SPY today was pretty bearish most of the day kind of you know had a little spike in the morning and then uh just kind of sold off and Jimmy did the opposite had that spike and then just rallied all day so as long as the market's not real volatile Jimmy can run and uh not to say that this it can't run even with its the market's volatile but um if it runs when the market's really volatile I think that's liquidation from margin calls so that's that's the best thanks so much for watching guys we'll see you on discord and have a good afternoon. Peace out.